Hi everyone, welcome to my next table read of Jessica Gabin's uh, first story called My Over Matter. Today we begin with chapters 3 and 4. Chapter 3 A similar looking bald guy was flanked by four other men. They all had clubs in their hands. I could control one or probably two person's minds, but five? I was seriously outnumbered. What are you doing here, girl? I calculated my moves. I could probably take out the first two guys by telepathy. Telepathy, sorry. And the next two? By my karate, of course. Then, there is the matter of the last guy. Shucks. I guess I could take a punch or two. You will turn around and pin the guy to your right. I planted a thought to the guy who had asked me the question. No sooner had the bald guy started turning around, I aimed a kick at the third guy's jaw. He went down like a chow. I took the fourth guy's wrist and flung him over like a rag doll. From the corner of my eye, I saw the bald guy struggling with the second guy. Uh, pause here. Why would the bald guy be struggling with the second guy? Aren't they supposed to be all fighting me? I don't quite understand why I wrote the sentence here, this way. Back to the story. I saw the fifth guy advancing on me with his club. He swung the club at me. I ducked, but he tripped me. I land hard on the pavement. Shit. Exploding pain burst through my head as I rode quickly, quickly to one side. This guy is good. No wonder they say save the best for the last. I got on my feet and saw him flashing out a kick. I blocked it. Stay still. I managed to get a thought in. Uh, here's a, there's some punctuation error here. It should be a comma instead of a full stop. Seemingly against his will, he froze. I kicked his face. He went out like a light. The third and fourth guy were, reco were recovering. Okay, party's over. I dashed through the alley and made my escape. Chapter 4 Look young and beautiful, agency looked like a hotel from the exterior. The aura was rich. I felt like a superstar myself walking through those doors. I was immediately greeted by a petite brown haired girl. I call her Miss Sunshine. Hello! Welcome to Look Young and Beautiful. How can I help you? You can help by turning off that megawatt smile, I thought to myself. I knew genuine smiles when I see it. Instead, I said, Hi, I'm from Press Times, and I would like to give a. Uh, give, not gave. Uh, yo, past and present tense. I would like to give an interview with a general manager. Huh? Mm, I think the phrase should not be like this. Um, I should be maybe say something like, oh, I would like to request for an interview with your general manager. Mm, back to the story. You mean Mr. Johnson? Miss Sunshine chirped. Yes. Do you have an appointment then? I had no time for this. You will get Mr. Johnson to see me immediately. Miss Sunshine turned and strode towards the reception phone. After a minute or two, Miss Sunshine returned with a cheery smile on her face. Please proceed to the elevators and head for the 12th floor. Mr. Johnson will be expecting you. I smiled. The mind is a powerful tool. Moments later, I stepped out of the 12th floor and found my way to Mr. Johnson's office. Mr. Johnson was damn good looking. He was like Brad Pitt, but a tad 10 years older. I understand you wanted to see me, miss. Bain, Jessica Bain. I'm from Press Times and I would like to interview you. 
You will tell me honestly word for word. I quickly planted the thought into his mind before he answered. What would you like to know? Is this agency somehow connected to the string of kidnappings lately? Mr. Johnson appeared to hesitate for a moment before replying. Yes, Miss Bain. We are involved. We are using the beauty of these people who joined our agency to revive an ancient evil. My voice caught in my throat. I gouged the truth of his words. Should be, does, is a gauge, right? But is it spelled like this? Hmm. Back to the story. He was telling me the truth. I, I gulped. Ancient evil? Did such a thing still exist in these days? Who's the mastermind? I... I don't know. I take orders from a guy named Rocky. Where can I find him? He stays in the motel not far from here. Here's the address. Mr. Johnson slipped a piece of paper towards me, containing the motel's name and address. Thanks. I wonder why I said that. Out of courtesy? Mr. Johnson was practically like a puppet now, saying whatever I asked from him. You will not remember me interviewing you. I was just a prospective client. I planted this thought as I stood up. I'm beginning to wonder whether I have also developed hemotic hum powers. Thanks for coming down, Miss Bain. Looking forward to you joining our agency, Mr. Johnson said almost instantly. I picked up a thought from his mind. What in the world just happened? Poor Mr. Johnson. He had no idea. And there it is, chapters 3 and 4 of Jessica Bain's story, Mind Over Matter. And the story has just begun. Bear in mind, like, to refresh your memory, I wrote this story almost 20 years ago, so pardon the sentence uh, phrasings and certain content. So, you know, 20 years ago I was just writing from uh, raw scratch. So, hope you like the story so far and we'll get to the end of the story in time. So thank you for tuning in today and thank you for coming through the end of this video. So please click uh, the subscribe button so that you can see more of these videos uh, appear in your, in your notifications tab. So I'll see you next time. Thank you. Bye-bye.